to The Knitted Bean. My name is Echo and I will be your host. I am coming to you from Montana. This is going to be mini sewed number two and I am going to do the 10 yarny things that Chevy Rill tagged in her recent episode. I have the door open so that the dogs can go in and out. Um, we might get a little bit of traffic noise. I was trying to record the intro and I had some earlier so hopefully it's not too bad. So, um, short disclaimer, uh, sometimes I do swear. I probably won't in this one because it's a short video, but meh, just a heads up. All right, let's jump right into it. What is your favorite color of yarn? Uh, if you have watched any of my podcasts, you probably already know the answer is green. This is my favorite color in general and I can't seem to resist from buying green yarn of any and every variety. Whether it's a tonal, a solid, I have less solid green yarns, but I have some. Speckles, uh, variegated, I just, I love some greens. I like the, like, the more bright lime or acid green or like, sour apple green than say like sapphire green or forest green but I do do those too and I really like dark like gray greens like olive greens brown greens those kinds of things so it's just like the whole spectrum um if you buy me yarn and you buy me green you're solid uh, what is your favorite weight of yarn? So I have a problem with fingering yarn. I love it. My yarn stash is divided into four, really three-ish containers. The acrylics and the whatnots, the fingering weight, the camelids, and the cotton. And the cotton has like, I don't know, maybe five or six skeins. Yeah, I'll probably a few more than that because I have some like dishcloth yarn up there, but not, not a whole lot up there. And the camelid is moderately full and has some DK stuffed in there because I don't have room for it anywhere else and I'm trying to get more DK. And the, the acrylic is eh, half full. And the fingering weight yarn is stuffed like I need a new drawer I've started to kind of sometimes set fingering up with the camelid because it's the yarn that I love I love to knit socks and even when I knit other things I like to knit with fingering weight yarn so um you know I like I have a project that I'm working on right now that's a cardigan couldn't remember the word for a second and it's fingering weight um I realized that I could knit sweaters and things like that much faster if I knit with something larger but I like the way fingering weight looks finer detailed um so yeah it's fingering all the way baby I do also like decay and I'm trying really hard to force myself not to automatically default to fingering weight when I buy a yarn because I am like oh I'm kind of a yardage whore so I'm like oh I could get you know 450 yards of fingering or I could get 230 yards of DK for the same price I'd rather have the more fingering even though really like when you knit it up you're gonna get the same size project like one skein of DK is roughly going to knit up to be about the same skein square footage as one skein of fingering like if you were going to knit a shawl because you're going to use bigger needles on the DK but it doesn't matter to me I just I, numbers wise I like the big number in my head um so I'm trying to force myself to do that because I do also like to make hats and stuff and I'm not a fingering weight hat person per se so I'm trying to branch out Number three is what is your favorite style of yarn? And much like Chevy Rell, I'm not really sure what style means. It could mean so many things. Like, 
does that mean like how it is spun like slub versus worsted versus plied um or does that mean like how it's dyed so if you're gonna go by dyed i tend to really like speckled and variegated i love how they look in the skeins and sometimes just the little skein baby is what i want it looks good in the skein and i'll make it look good in something too but i like that it looks good in the skein as well um and i like color so i like that it has that um particularly like i really like like greens and grays speckled and variegated with other things um and then if you're gonna talk like as far as how it's spun i would definitely say like my favorite is um like a two ply high twist uh fingering weight spin that's a one that i really love to work with Rennie is over here panting she's so hot she just went and toasted herself in the sun I like the way slub looks when it knits up, but knitting it is a real pain in the ass. So I wouldn't say that. And I'm not a fan of knitting with worsted. I'm a yarn strangler, so with worsted and me, I tend to like accidentally stretch it thick and thin. So that's where I'm at on that. What is your favorite fiber is number four. So I'm not a spinner, but I definitely have fiber preferences. So my number one favorite fiber grouping, I would have to say is the camelids. So um, the llama and alpaca and camel group. I have knit with all three, like baby camel, llama and alpaca. And you would think the camel would be like really scratchy, but it's not because like the scratchiness would be the guard hairs and the under fur is really soft. Um, I'm really, really, really big fan of llama. It's super duper duper hot. And I live in Montana, so it is a, a good heating version. It's a non-superwash type thing, like you don't get superwash llama or superwash camel or superwash alpaca, but it's also not like really rustic feeling. It's very soft. So those, like if, if I go in a yarn store and there is llama yarn, there's a good chance I'm gonna really have to resist buying it. Um, a close second is yak. So any kind of yak blend, so like a wool yak blend, I'm real big on. Um, again, for the softness and the warmth. Um, I think the warmth is a big component just because of where I live. I'm not so big on knitting with non-superwash yarns and those are really warm. And so I think the, the camelid and the yak, that kind of adds it back in. Okay. Number five, what is your favorite brand that you can get with in your country? And I had to laugh when Chevy Rell did this because I have the exact same thing, except for that I have mine on what's called a Trello board. Um, if you've never used Trello, it's a free website that lets you make and organize lists with tags and notes and pictures. And so I I have two Yarny Trello boards. I have several writing Trello boards as well because you can collaborate with other people. But I have two Yarny Trello boards. Um, one is all the sweaters that I wanna make and then it lists the yardage, the kind of yarn that it takes. So like worsted, fingering, singles, mohair. And then the colors that I'd like to do it in. It has a picture of the pattern. It has a link to the pattern. It has a link to the dyers if I have specific dyers that I'd like to use for it, etc. And there's like 10 sweaters on there. I will pop it up here so that you can kind of see how that looks. And then I have a second one, which is exactly what Chevy Rell has on her phone. I have a, like, I call it my, it's literally titled my yarn bucket list. And it lists out, um, like, dyers that I'm dying to try um and so let me pull it up and see who is on it so I have yarns to buy 
I have project bags that I want to buy and then um, I have like I'm working on a collecting yarns for a green fade so I have the yarns that I want to collect for the green fade I have certain accessories that I want to get and then I have like a, a little list of like discount codes um, from different podcasts so yarns that I want to buy um, I really want to get um, Prue Yarns, Punk Rock Unicorn from Germany. Um, she does the best oranges and um, she has this oil slick one right now that I'm really into. And um, I'd really like to get some Nora George yarns. Um, some Shirley Bryan, Dandelion and Dogwood. Um, I just, I have tons on here. I just can't even read them all. There's so many. Um, and then, and the, a lot of those are like out of the country, but I can order them in here. So, and then it says, what is your favorite brand that you can't get within your country? So, I, much like Chevy Roll, I feel like I can get almost anything here if I'm willing to pay the shipping. So what I'm going to list on here is Holst Garn because it's a cheap yarn that I really want to get and I really want to try. And at like, I don't know, three or four dollars for a 50 gram skein, I feel like it's a yarn that I won't pay the shipping for because the shipping is equal to or greater than the skein, the cost per skein. Um, and there are places that sell it here in the U.S., but I'm not willing to pay the price that's charged in the U.S. So in the U.S., a 50 gram skein runs seven dollars, and that's of course because they had to pay 350 to ship it in per skein. And I just mentally, in my mind, I'm like, but it's the whole point of it is it's supposed to be a good value yarn, and so if I'm paying a not value price for it then the point is obliterated. So um, if ever I were to like go to the UK and be able to buy Holst Garn for $3.50 a skein, I would totally load up um, and, you know, at $25 for a hundred or a one pound gram cone or one pound cone, I would definitely buy some cones and bring it back and try it out. Um, but I'm not going to pay the extra to have it shipped since the draw of it is that it is such a cheap yarn um, that's supposed to be really good quality. All right, number seven. My throat's getting dry. Number seven. What is your favorite yarn store online and brick and mortar? Okay, so online is super easy. That would be Undercover Otter. Um, they are based out of the Netherlands and they are run by my friend Aiden um, with assistance from one employee named Jack. So I order a lot <laughs> from them. You've seen lots of them on the podcast. Super bright colors. Um, some of their yarns are uh, blacklight reactive. Just really fun stuff that I love. Um, despite that I'm like currently knitting with a brown. But I mean, I do like the really bright stuff too. Um, and so I like it. It's a very clean site. It's very easy to navigate. Um, it's white with the, all the colored yarn on it and it really pops. It has different sections that you can look, you know, tools, yarn, you can sort the yarn by um, fiber or by weight. Um, all that stuff. So I really like that one. And I do find a lot of fiber websites really clunky. Like, I mean, really? They were built in the 90s and nobody ever updated them or what? I don't understand. Like, I, I don't want to have to page through 100 pages because you've only got five things on each page. And I also don't, on the other hand, want like, all 180 things on one page 
lumped together my yak with my merino <laughs> with my fingering with my you know what i mean like i need it to be filterable filters are important you guys um <laughs> so if you're designing a yarn website filters are important question number eight do you keep scrap yarn and if so what do you do with it yes yes i do um i keep i keep the scrap yarn and currently what do i do with it i hoard it <laughs> I really want to start a blanket with it, but I'm like, oh, I need shorter needles, straight needles to knit it, and I haven't bought those. I have like a really nice set, not set, but just like a really nice pair that I want to buy to start it. I have a pattern picked out, everything purchased. I just haven't, haven't gotten a start on it. The idea of like the scrap blanket really appeals to me because my grandmother and like a lot of the people in my family quilted and it, they didn't buy quilting fabric. They like cut up jeans and t-shirts and polyester pants and whatever was left over from these large families and they made quilts out of it because my um, grandparents were Okies that came over from Oklahoma on like Route 66 or whatever it was during the Cotton Bowl. So they were super resourceful like that. So like I have a lot of blankets like that and that really appeals to me too. I could never throw away a scrap piece of yarn ever. Like it will be this long and I will find a thing to do with it. Um, what is your favorite thing to crochet or knit is number nine. So I don't crochet. I did in high school. I did know how, I mean, technically I kinda know how. But like, I don't, I don't think I can do anything but like chain of crochet at this point in life. Um, so it's going to have to be knit and I'm going to have to say socks on the basis that that's what I'm doing 90% of the time. I love hand knit socks. I give a lot of them away, but I also keep lots of them for myself. And I feel like there are endless varieties that you can make, even with vanilla socks. You can mix up the toe, the heel, the cuff, the pattern what kinds of yarn you're using to get just endless variations. Um, and it's fun and it's such an easy project. It's little, it sits in my lap. It doesn't, you know, the like I'm working on a cardigan right now and I'm like, Ugh, turn, Ugh. it's so big and heavy. And socks are never like that. They just turn with me as I go and I don't have to worry about it at all. Which leads us to number 10. If you could crochet or knit one last thing for the rest of your life, what would it be and what yarn would you use? And that would be socks for all those reasons I just listed. And it's really hard for me to pick a yarn. So what I'm gonna say is a base. Uh, that two ply high twist sock base or a yak sock base is the base that I would choose. And then I would just choose to have that from as many indie dyers as I could because I am a yarn whore and I do really like my indie dyers and I will scrimp and save to get my fun indie dyers. Um, and I would just knit socks and socks and socks and socks because I like them. They're fun. So that is what I have got for the 10 yarny things. I am going to tag the Caffeinated Craft Mamas podcast for the 10 yarny things. I would like to see you answer those questions um, and hear what you have to say about your favorite yarny things. I look forward to seeing them. All right, that's what I've got for you guys for a short episode. There should be quite a lot of fun for the next podcast episode. I should be getting something big in the mail. I've made lots of progress on my cardigan. So I will see you then. Until then, have a good morning, a good evening, a good afternoon, whatever time it is for you, and stay safe. Hello, and welcome to The Knitted Bean. This is mini sewed number two. Let's wait for the truck to pass.